Hi everybody, my name is Marta Mama. I'm your basic queer bitch. And since I'm from Spain, but I grew up in the US, I think I have kind of a unique perspective on Drag Race España. So I'm here to explain you everything you didn't get because of the translation. So I'm super excited today because we have the first episode of Drag Race España season two. And this was probably, yeah, I'm gonna say it. It was my favorite episode of the whole franchise. I'm super excited. There are a lot of references. So we're gonna try to make this video as short as possible and not six hours long. Also, sorry if it takes me a little bit longer to post my reviews this year, but I have some news for you uh, because this year I'm going to be an official correspondent for The Chop with Latrice and Manila and I am so excited about that. So I'm having to do like basically two reviews and you know, I'm a single mom working, all those things. So I'm very sorry if it takes a little bit longer. But thank you so, so, so much uh, to everyone. This wouldn't be possible without all of you. And uh, this is just like a dream come true. So let's start with this episode. So I'm not gonna go into detail with absolutely everything because you know that for that you have many other reviews. Uh, I'm just going to explain like some of the references or things that you might not get. So first in the workroom, we have Samantha Valentine's. Samantha Valentine's is probably one of the queens I'm most excited to see here. Uh, she's a very, very beloved queen here in Spain. Her videos went kind of uh, viral in the pandemic and she is very, very funny. Her looks are maybe not the most interesting thing about her, but when she came into the workroom, she was holding a cocktail in her hand. That was Valentine's with Coke. <laughs> and that's because she, in her live videos that she posts on, in Instagram and that she got famous for, uh, she's always drinking. And she always said that she ever went into Drag Race España, she would have to come into the workroom with a cocktail in her hand. So super excited to see her. Next in the workroom is Onyx. She looks amazing. She's kind of mysterious. Um, I'm so excited to see Onyx as well. I think she's a very, very interesting artist with a very, very interesting perspective. And I'm very excited for everything she has to say. Um, she's After that, she's playing with Samantha's boobs and Samantha's playing with her boobs. That's not one of the things I love the most, like when cis men start playing sexually with fake boobs. It gives me kind of a weird vibe, but well, it's fine. I love these queens, it will be fine. Next we have an Edita Bondas, that's our bearded queen of the season. And her entrance phrase is Alguien ha pedido una cebra a domicilio. So she's using the exact same phrase that Dovima Nurmi used last year, but she changed Zorra, which is a fox, but it's also like a hooker, into zebra because she's wearing zebra print. And I think it's just taking that phrase that now is like a big thing and just making it into something stupid. Instead of having a little bell, she has like, I don't know how you call the big bells that the cows wear here. Yeah, she's she has one of those. I love when they make something that was very serious into something that's very stupid. I I just love it. And the look was... Then we have Draxetlas. Draxetlas, an icon. As you know, she was very well known because she won El Carnaval de las Palmas uh, twice. She dressed up as the Virgin Mary and then she transformed into like Jesus Christ on the cross and it was like, you know, it ruffled a couple feathers, but she she is still using all this religious symbolism and all these images. She looks like the inside of any church in Spain. We have all this amazing, very, very old antique uh, artwork everywhere in the churches here. So I think that her look was absolutely amazing. After Drag Setlas, we have Estrella Extravaganza. Estrella Extravaganza looks exactly like a bottle of Tio Pepe. Uh, Tio Pepe is a wine seller, a wine company. 
and it's a very well-known bottle of wine because uh, the advertisement that they used to do for this type of wine was they used to put like big cutouts of this bottle in the roads in Spain and they used to do that too with a big bowl and that was from another cellar that was called Osborne. Uh, so when you drove in the road, you would used to see like giant cutouts with the form of a bottle of wine or this big like bull, like the bullfighting bull that we have here. Uh, this wine cellar is from Jerez, that's where she is from. And even in her city, they have a big roundabout with like a sculpture, a statue of this big bottle of Tio Pepe. And this bottle is always wearing the flamenco hat and the little jacket. So super cute. I already love her. You know, Estrella is one of my favorites. So I'm super excited. Then we have Ariel Rec, my sister reviewer. So happy to see her there. She's dressed up as Pebbles Flintstone, I think. And yeah, I don't have a lot to say about her because I think that I missed her in the entire episode. She didn't got much like airtime, but but well, I'm I'm very very proud of her. I'm very proud that she is there. Then we have Marina. I'm obsessed with Marina. I will explain later. She is like my favorite human being of this century. Um she's wearing a like a navy outfit because Marina in Spain, mar means sea, the ocean, the sea. And Marina is the word that we use for the Navy. Very gender fuck, very Jean Paul Gaultier. I love every single detail. She knows how to edit herself. She knows fashion and she understands her references. And I just, I'm just, I'm just so in love with her. Then we have Jota Caracota. Uh, she comes in with a tiger and she comes in singing, Tú lo que quiere que me coma el tigre, que me coma el tigre. And tú lo que quiere que me coma el tigre, que me coma el tigre. That's a song from Lola Flores, and that would mean something like, uh, you want the tiger to eat me? It's like a weird, kind of like risque song from Lola Flores, I'm gonna leave it down below. Her look was amazing, this dress was designed by David Rodriguez and her, and David sewed the whole thing, and she looks just amazing. Her style, it's what uh, my good friend Rosario Puñales would call a chili punk, uh, that's like flamenco me mixed with like punk and goth. I think this was the most amazing dress from all the entrance looks and she looks just stunning. About the drama in this episode, you're gonna see that the edit or the drama or how they are treating the person Jota Carajota is like a problematic queen. I do know that she had some problems with Diamante Mary Brown and her group. And I know that she, they say here that she had some problems with Estrella Estravaganza. I just want to remind everybody that uh, Cota was 18 years old and she is also Romani. She is Gitana. And I don't think if you have to choose one to be like the problematic or the villain of the season, I would not choose uh, Gitana from Jerez de la Frontera that's 18 years old. I think that's kind of problematic. So um, yeah, I just want to defend her a little bit because you know, you have to keep the context in mind. Then we have Marisa Prisa. Marisa Prisa is wearing a traditional uh, dress from Galicia. That's like the regional costume. Uh, she's wearing el dengue. That's what she has here across her her chest and that comes from Galicia and she's also carrying a little basket with pimientos del padron. Those are like little bell peppers um, that you eat them like deep fried and they're very famous there. So yeah, she looks like very sweet, maybe not as confident as the other ones, but she looks very, very sweet. Diamantes and Diamantes entrance was very fun. You can really see her living her life. That body was kind of cool with all the chains. Uh, she designed it and my fellow YouTuber Parody Paradise was the one who sewed it. So I'm gonna leave you Parody's channel down below in case you speak Spanish. And yeah, she looks very fun. They're playing off all this drama between Jota and Diamante when it was like, you know, it was just like Twitter drama. It wasn't that big of a deal, but well, you know. Then we have Yurigi del Cli. Her face is just so, 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 so cute. And her entrance line was, um, she said, 
No me toque el chichi que todavía no me la han puesto. Translation. Don't touch my pussy because touching your pussy would mean like don't mess with me. Uh, don't touch my pussy because I haven't got one yet. So she's already telling us that she is a trans girl and I love that. Her face is just amazing. Her body. That look was like so cute. She doesn't have to be loud and obnoxious for all of us to love her. So very excited for her as well. I think I love them all. What's my problem? Can I just hate someone? Last in the workroom is Sharon. And you can, you can see what I was explaining in the Meet the Queens review. Everyone in the workroom just shits themselves because uh, Sh Sharon is a legend. Sharon was even one of the people that they were talking about for uh, Supreme's role. So she was maybe going to be one of the hosts, but uh, she ended up not getting the part. Now we have uh, Supreme Deluxe, with, who I absolutely adore. But you know, that's her level of a legend that she is. She's 45 years old. She's been working for over 20, 25 years. So everyone in the workroom knows who she is. The face that all of them have is just amazing. Uh, Samantha Valentine's is just freaking out and all of them are fangirling very, very hard when they see Sharon. I understand. Me too, girl, me too. Then they have the mini challenge where they have to like emulate La Maja Desnuda de Goya. That is this painting by Francisco de Goya. He painted the same person dressed up and naked. So they're called La Maja Vestida and La Maja Desnuda. And they have to recreate it. But, you know, you don't need me to understand those references. So you can watch that in any other review. But Estrella Estravaganza was the one who won. She camped it up a lot. She had like long nose hairs. I think they were probably a rolled up lash that she just stuck inside. She had long titties. She was just trying to camp it out. I think she was very smart because she was already wearing the white mug. So the only way to have a fast look is just to make it look even nastier already because if you try to fix it and make that look good, you're gonna be in a lot of trouble. And then we have the runway. There are a lot of references here because instead of having a maxi challenge, we're gonna have a runway with two categories. First category is a queen from your hometown and the other one is a symbol of your hometown. The guest judge this week is Gloria Trevi. Gloria Trevi is a Mexican singer that she's like a total diva. Uh, kind of problematic. I will let you Google all the whole story. But yeah, interesting choice as a judge. But the girls are very, very excited, nevertheless. So a legend. Yeah, she is a legend. She might be problematic, but you know. I really, really liked the dynamic this episode. I think Supreme is probably the best host of the whole franchise, including RuPaul. And the things that I didn't like about the first season, I can really see that they've corrected them. So the dynamic between the judges and Supreme is a lot smoother and the rhythm is a lot better. The jokes that they make are less like, I don't know, they seemed very, very fake and no one, they weren't really funny. And here I can see the judges really having a lot more fun. The production has listened to what we are saying. That is, that changes the whole experience because you know they are listening and they don't put their egos in front of the product. So thank you very much to the production. So category queen from my hometown, there is a hundred thousand million references and I'm so excited to explain them because most of them are very, very obscure, underground, but very, very important references for us as LGBT community. So it looks like they made this episode just for me to explain it to you guys. So uh, I'm, I was born for this. Let's go. First up, we have Benedita Bondage. Benedita Bondage is from Elche. Elche is here and she's dressed up as La Dama de Elche. La Dama de Elche is a, a little sculpture, a statue uh, that's like 2,500 years old. 
and it's La Dama de Elche, the dame from Elche. So I think she did a very, very good job. Then we have Jota Carajota. She is dressed up as Rocio Jurado from Chipiona. Rocio Jurado is a big diva of the Spanish song. She was a very important person. She still is in our hearts. From all the looks and all the different eras of Rocio Jurado that Jota could have chosen, she chose the, like, destape uh, era. Destape was, a, like, a specific period of time, and especially in movies, where people could start showing off their body, because before that, before, like, in the 70s and the 60s and the 50s, the censorship on TV was very, very big. We had our fascist dictatorship here. Rocio Jurado was always saying that she always wanted to show off a little more skin, but the censors on, in the TV stations wouldn't let her. So this is Rocio Jurado from that era where, you know, she could start wearing things that are see-through and the little feathers. The little feathers are also about the times of La Revista. Those were like little musicals that they did in like small theaters. And she's referencing all of these things in Rocio Jurado. Uh, she's also wearing a peineta. I explained that last year where a peineta is. Here you have some reference. That peineta is 3D, 3D printed and it says Ahora es tarde señora, which is a song from Rocío Jurado. She even has tiny seashells that she personally picked up from the beach in Chipiona in that like particular town. Um, so a lot of detail, very interesting choice. Then we have Samantha Valentines. Samantha Valentines is dressed up as Miss Mara, who was a trapeze artist, a circus artist, in like the 50s, I think. I don't know a lot about Miss Mara. It's kind of an obscure reference, but, you know, she's from San Fernando. And uh, Samantha says that she was like a big activist and she had a lot of awards in Spain. So she wanted to pay homage to a woman that was an activist, so... Props to her. The look that it's directly inspired by is this one by Miss Mara. I personally think that if you're going to drag up a look, it should be like more than the original one, more of everything. But well, you know, I couldn't care less what she wears. My heart just feels so worn when I see Samantha on Drag Race. Like, I couldn't care less. Ariel Rick is playing tribute to Alaska. Alaska was a judge in Drag Race España season one, and she is referencing this cover of this album with her band. The fact that she chose Alaska, who is a little bit problematic inside our LGBT community, well, but yeah, the Mo Movida Madrileña, that's where Alaska comes from, was the punk movement that happened in Madrid after our dictator, Francisco Franco, died. So that's when we started opening up to other countries. So Alaska is the best known person from that movement. So they chose her. So, okay. Then we have Marina as La Ocaña. This was one of the most beautiful moments in my life. Uh, Jose Ocaña is probably my favorite artist in general, and it, it was such an important person in the LGBT community. It was such an important person for the queer arts, and she was so mistreated in her lifetime that I think this is just beautiful. And what I like the most is the way she did it. So uh, Jose Ocaña was an artist, a uh, painter and sculptor and a performer from Cantillana in Sevilla, but uh, she moved to Barcelona. And she used to like dress up as a lady and walk around the Ramblas in Barcelona. And she would just show off like exactly how Marina did it. She would show off all her things, but in a very like classy way. Uh, she was ahead of her time. And this is a very, like, underground artist that lived in difficult conditions many times. One thing that you guys have to understand is that in Spain, we saw this with absolutely no censorship. So we could see everything. She is not tucked. And that's the same way that Ocaña did it. So I just love the way 
that she explains it as, as something cute and classy. And that's exactly it. It was It's so easy to misinterpret who Okanya was and why she was so important for the movement. If you want to know more about La Ocaña, I cannot recommend enough the film that Ventura Ponce did about her. I don't know where you can find it, but I'm going to leave all the information down below. I have watched it in filming here in Spain, but I don't know where you can find it, where you're from. You're going to understand a lot more about why all these references are important, because even though they're a lot more obscure than if they did a pop diva, for example, from Spain, which we have, um, they're more obscure, but they are a lot more important for us because after 40 years of dictatorship, everything in the media was so censored that the queer community could not really trust in the mainstream media. So underground artists and people from the streets and real true artists and also our own traditions. Okanya was very big on like the religious folklore that they have in Cantillana. That's what made like the base of what queer culture and queer art is here in Spain. So this is the hugest, hugest homage, tribute, reference. I love her for this choice. I love her for how classy she did it. You can really understand that she understands Okanya and I when I saw this I started crying I threw myself to the floor and it started I started rolling I was watching this with my friend Jose de Carrillo um, Rosario Puñales Rosario Molina she is also a drag queen and she is an expert on Okanya and it's both of our favorite artists we never thought that we would see something like this on TV so sorry if I get emotional but this <laughs> I love you, Marina. Thank you. Sorry for that. You know, I get emotional sometimes. Then we have Diamante Mary Brown. She's referencing Agustina de Aragón. Um, Agustina de Aragón was a person uh, during our War of Independence. That was in the 1800s. And the legend says that she was taking, like, the food, the lunch to her husband, who was battling in this war against the French people, I think. Uh, and while she was going there, like suddenly everyone around her basically died. So she took a fire, uh, a little flame from a fire, and she lit up the cannons. Do you call them cannons, these things? So, and that's how they won the war because the other ones thought oh there must be like they must have backup let's run and that's why she has the td cannons with the gag uh the amante mary brown chose to reference aragon instead of republica Domin the dominican republic or madrid because when she moved from the dominican republic she spent a long time living in zaragoza that's the capital of aragon so she decided to reference that city because that meant a lot for her then we have Yuri del Cli. She's wearing this dress that immediately reminds us of this dress. This dress was worn by Esperanza Aguirre and it was designed by Agatha Ruiz de la Prada. I have a little suspicion that she, the person that she was trying to do was Esperanza Aguirre. Esperanza Aguirre is a very, very conservative politician in Madrid. And she doesn't say that she's referencing Esperanza Aguirre. She says she's referencing the designer. And I'm like, uh-huh, okay. But you're choosing the dress that she designed for Esperanza Aguirre. That dress is cute because um, that's the flag of Madrid. It's like red with white stars. And Agatha Ruiz de la Prada is a very interesting designer. Uh, also kind of like conservative, but I think Yurigi was trying to do specifically a very conservative politician just for the gag of it, not like she agrees with her, but just like in a very campy way, like if you're doing like a Donald Trump look, you know? So uh, the look was very cute. I didn't feel a lot of confidence from her on the runway. The stars were all wobbly. She lost one or two. But yeah, that was Yurigi. She is just gorgeous. 
that's like the main thing. I am just gorgeous. Then we have Marisa Prisa referencing Marta Sánchez. Marta Sánchez is a pop artist. Marta Sánchez is actually from Madrid, but spent a lot, of, a long time in A Coruña, Galicia. That's the other way around because Marisa Prisa is from Galicia, but spent a lot of time on, in Madrid. So she chose basically the opposite. Uh, Marta Sánchez is a pop diva. She's also known for being quite like conservative and she is always in all these benefits for uh, to fight breast cancer. I think it was her sister who fought breast cancer. So she is like very well known for all these like advertisements and campaigns against breast cancer. Uh, I think Anna Locking is also a breast cancer survivor. So yeah, you might like it more or less, but you know, it was cute. Then we have Sharon. Sharon is from Barcelona. She's wearing this beautiful caftan that when she opened, you could see the skyline of Barcelona. Uh, she is Montserrat Caballé. Montserrat Caballé is an opera singer. Uh, she was very, very, very famous in Spain. And actually Maria Callas, when they asked her who was going to be her successor, she said, it can only be Caballé. So she died, unfortunately, but she was very, very famous because in the Olympic Games that we had in Barcelona in 1992, she, she sang the song Barcelona uh, with Freddie Mercury. And when Sharon turns around, you can see that she has a little Freddie Mercury doll in her bun that Freddie Mercury looks is wearing exactly the same outfit that Freddie Mercury was wearing in Barcelona. So yeah, I think it was super cute. A lot of details. Her presence, because it wasn't like that big of a deal, the look, but her presence in the stage in the runway, you can really, really tell the 25 years of experience that she has. Then we have another of the moments that made me cry. I'm sorry, I'm a crier, okay? Um, Estrella Estravaganza chose for her diva Monica del Raval. Monica del Raval was a very famous prostitute that was born in La Mancha but moved to Barcelona. Uh, Estrella Estravaganza is from Jerez de la Frontera but she lives in Barcelona. So she chose this person. And this is, this is another example of someone that is not known through mainstream media, but she is a diva and a symbol in the LGBT community. Monica del Raval was a sex worker. She was a prostitute. She was always wearing this very, very, very heavy makeup. You would never see her without makeup. Her, you know, her hygiene maybe was not on point, but she was very, very loved by everyone. She went to all these bars. She was always in the street trying to sell these calendars that she made with her picture. Actually, Estrella Estravaganza, when she comes down the runway, she is carrying one of those calendars from Monica del Raval. And I'm absolutely 100% sure that she bought that calendar from Monica del Raval. Uh, and this calendar is what Estrella Estravaganza has on, in her room, like hanging on the walls. I like, there is no doubt in my mind about that. Monica del Raval also was always selling her DVD with a little movie about herself. And she is a true icon for the community. And it's not a person that uh, did anything special. It was just her personality, how she was beloved by the LGBT community. I also cried with this because I don't know, like I'm very proud of the choices they're making. This is exactly what I wanted to see in Drag Race. And I'm like, I love you, Estrella. Then we have Drag Setlas. Drag Setlas is referencing someone that I didn't know anything about before, but I've been studying and talking to some friends in Canarias. So it looks like she's doing something similar to what, um, Estrella Estravanza is doing with Monica del Raval. Uh, this person was Lolita Pluma. I've learned a lot about Lolita Pluma these days. I love this episode because I got to know more about the culture. Lolita Pluma was like an old lady that wore all these very weird outfits and terrible makeup, similar to what Monica del Raval 
would wear and you know but uh she wasn't a prostitute she was an old lady that was always selling like chewing gum and postcards and things like that in el parque de santa catalina santa catalina park that's the park where in carnival they have the big drag gala in that park the one that i always talk about the canary island drag that's where it's held and she was always feeding the cats in that park Actually, if you ever go to Las Palmas, at to the park Santa Catalina, there is a statue of her feeding the cats in that park. Uh, it looks like this. And it was kind of cute because, yes, it had the reveal. It wasn't a great reveal, but the cape that she is wearing looked like the background of the cat, which I think is very smart and it was very nice. And... The thing about all these choices is that what I love is the actual choice that they make. So choosing to depict Lolita Pluma instead of a big Canary Island diva, I think it's just so sweet and it wears my heart. And they know they're watching outside and they're very proud of where they're from. So I really, really love that they could have chosen someone that everyone knows who, who they are, but they didn't. They chose to show you guys what they love about where, where they're from. They're not looking for your approval. They're showing off where they're from. They're showing off the queer culture in Spain. And you know, I'm gonna cry again. And last up, we have Onyx. Onyx is dressed, this is the funniest thing. She's dressed up as Isabel Segunda. Isabel Segunda was the queen of Spain. There were like many wars, but that's not important. She's dressed up as this queen, okay? She knows, knows nothing about this queen. The thing is that in Madrid, the company for like the public water, like the tap water, is called El Canal de Isabel Segunda. So that's the name of that public company. So when you say Isabel Segunda, what you're really referencing is the tap water for, from Madrid, which has almost become like this meme, like they pretend in their advertisement that it's like the best tap water in the world and it's actually quite disgusting. So it's almost like a meme, that whole company. And so... This is the best, it's not only a great look. She dressed of like water, which is almost impossible to do, but well, she found out a way. But the name of the water company is a queen. So she's also dressed up as that queen. Like, come on, are you kidding me? Your mind, like, wow, wow. Second category is symbol of my hometown. So first up, we have Benedita Bondage. She is dressed up as a palm tree. Uh, the whole dress and everything is amazing. The headpiece is just out of this world. But if you take a closer look, the, the dress, the whole dress, the little scales of the palm tree are made with the shoe forms made out of leather because Elche, that's where she's from, is known for the shoemaking business that they have there. So she combined the palm trees and the shoemaking business into one look. Next we have Jota Carajota. Jota Carajota is again inspired by La Botella del Tío Pepe, just like, um, just like the entrance look of Estrella Extravaganza because they're both from Jerez. She's dressed up as a venenciadora. Those are the ladies that would serve the wine in the Jerez Fair. So they would dress up like that with that little jacket and the hat. And they would take a venencia, which is like, I don't know how to explain it. But it's a little thing that you put inside the wine and you would serve in the specific glass of wine that you have for that wine. She looks absolutely stunning. Not the most confident person. Maybe the chains that she had in the back were, I don't know, she was a little bit worried about those, but she looked stunning. You cannot tell her anything. Then we have Samantha Valentine's. Samantha Valentine's is from San Fernando, and the people in San Fernando are called Cañaillas. Cañailla is this like seashell that she's wearing here. They're actually like this big and it's like a round seashell with little spikes. Uh, that's a food here, they would eat that all the time. 
I don't because I'm a vegetarian and they seem like kind of ucky. So she's also inspired by Carnaval. That's a very big thing in Cadiz. All her dress, that style looks very much Carnaval. And she decided to camp it out with that giant caña yeah, on her head. That's like basically defying gravity. Um, I didn't like that it looks like she was wearing a diaper. But I like her references, and as I always say, I couldn't care less what she's wearing. Next, we have Ariel Rick with another double reference. She is referencing the team El Atlético de Madrid from Madrid, the soccer team, the football team. And she's also referencing the god Neptune because uh, people that are from El Atlético de Madrid, uh, when they have a big win or they have something to celebrate, they would go to the Neptune fountain in the center of Madrid. Uh, so yeah, good job. I really, really love the hair. Then we have Marina, my new love, the new reason to wake up every morning. Uh, Marina is now referencing Le Sample, that's a whole neighborhood in Barcelona, and she looks exactly like the map of that area. Her dress goes like this in diagonal. There is also there is actually a very big street in the center of Barcelona that's called La Diagonal, uh, because Barcelona is one of those cities that was made like all squares, which is not very normal here in Spain, and it has a diagonal. So all that neighborhood over there, all that whole region, that's what she is. In the hand, she has a little building, and that's because La Diagonal will end up in this very famous building. So I think it didn't translate 100% because it was more symbolic, like the blue tights was because of the water and it was a little more intellectual and symbolic. But I love the punk aesthetic of everything. I just love the whole concept that she decided to go as like a whole district of the city, like her mind. I just, she cannot do anything wrong. I'm, I'm telling you in advance, I'm not going to be objective with Marina. I don't care what she does. She cannot do any wrong for me. So I stand her. And if you're looking for objectivity, go to somewhere else. I am a fan of Drag Race, just like you. And I'm here in my channel and I'm going to be a fan of Marina until the day I die. Then we have Diamante Mary Brown with a very cool look. She's referencing baseball. Baseball is like no one knows anything about baseball in Spain. Well, of course, there are people that play baseball in Spain. But in general, if you ask for general basic rules of baseball in Spain, no one knows a thing. So it's fun that she decided to interpret a sport that is the national sport in the Dominican Republic and that here no one knows anything about. I think it it's a little message about how little we know about Dominican Republic and, and other countries. So very cool idea. I really loved the stitching in the jacket. I loved all the little details. Those shoes are cool. Yeah, very cool. What about Yurigi Dirkli with this huge muscle? How, like, she is like the cutest thing. So, like, vaginal, so risque, so interesting, so true to the reference because she's from, like, well, she was born in Madrid, but she's referencing Belgium, and this is, the like, the national dish, the most famous dish in Belgium, moule frite, so they have mussels and french fries, and that's, it. call it a meal, and yeah, so... I just will love every single like vaginal reference from a trans girl. Uh, she looks gorgeous. She forgot to wear like clothes, which I am here for. So yeah, uh, very, very cute, Judy D. Then Marisa Prisa is referencing El Camino de Santiago. She's wearing La Cruz Compostelana, La Cruz de Santiago here on her chest. So Santiago de Compostela is probably my favorite city in the whole world and it's located here. They have this huge cathedral and Santiago de Compostela is very well known because people will go on a pilgrimage to Santiago del Compostela from anywhere in the world. This has been going on for centuries and centuries and centuries and centuries. So nowadays people still go on a pilgrimage to Santiago de Compostela 
and she's she has all the big symbols the little purse that she has that's for the incense in the big cathedral in Santiago de Compostela they have one that is just huge it weighs tons and tons they have to lift it up between a lot of people and they swing it around in the church from one side to another it's huge super super big and it's something that's very very characteristic of Galicia and specifically of Santiago of course so uh, the thing I like the most about the dress is the reference and the little incense purse that she was wearing then we have Sharon. Sharon is referencing Barcelona, so she comes out with this beautiful coat with the fur and she's being like a rich woman in Barcelona. Her headpiece looks like La Sagrada Familia, that's a church in Barcelona by Gaudí. And she has a reveal where you can see a dress that is made just exactly like El Parque Güell de Gaudí. Uh, this is a park in Barcelona and of course that park is absolutely full of pigeons so when she reveals into this park the big volume is given by the white pigeons all around uh, her skirt and yeah I think this was so smart it was so well done you can really tell that she understands perfectly what she's doing and that she is a professional. Then we have Estrella Extravaganza in green and white. Those are the colors of the Andalucía flag. And she's referencing La Feria de Jerez. I spoke about it before. I spoke about it in my last video about the Meet the Queens. La Feria uh, is like a one week long party in a big park. They would create like individual tiny little houses slash bars where people will meet up and there are like hundreds of them. They create like a tiny little city and that's a week long party. That's where you will find the ladies with el vestido de flamenco all dressed up in like the regional costume with las peinetas and you know, the fan and everything and riding the horses because it's the horse fair. It used to be around the time that they would trade horses but now it's just like the name and the gentlemen are dressed up, they're dancing Sevillanas and, you know, what you would expect from Spain, that's what she's referencing. So she's doing a mix between a uh, horse and un traje de flamenca. Like everyone felt a lot of emotion here in Andalucía when she said, yeah, and I'm wearing green and white because those are the colors of Andalucía. And we're like, ah, thank you. <laughs> drag setless. I don't have a lot to explain about this because she's basically wearing the symbol of Las Palmas that is like the coat of arms. I don't know how to explain it because you guys don't have those things. You have like the state fruit, the state flower and you have different things but we have symbols that have been going on for centuries you know. So that's the symbol of Las Palmas de Gran Canaria and she just interpreted it in her body. Giant red coat. She was wearing heels, not moon boots. But yeah, that's what she was doing. Then we have this absolutely amazing, wasn't it amazing, look by Onyx. I want you to tell me down below what you felt when you saw this, please. Onyx is referencing a statue that you could find in El Parque del Retiro, the Retiro Park. That's a big park in the center of Madrid, similar to like what Central Park would be in New York. We have one of those in Madrid. And there is this big statue, this big sculpture of a fallen angel. And it looks just like that with, you know, you can really tell this. It, it's referencing a sculpture. One thing that's very, very smart that she did is that she covered her nipples. So it gave a lot, it's a small, tiny little detail. Onyx was basically naked. You could see that she was just tucked. She has this snake around her leg and, you know, the blind eyes, just like a statue would be. It was so genius. It's a symbol of Madrid, but it's kind of an obscure symbol because, you know, it's an angel, a fallen angel. It's also a demon. It's an inanimate object. It's, I don't know. I just, I when I was watching this, I was just amazed with how beautiful she looked. I'm just speechless. So this is editing Marta a couple hours later. I just noticed while I was finishing editing the video that I forgot to mention anything about the lip sync or whoever went home 
But you know, you have any other review for that. The lip sync was messy, yes. But it wasn't as messy as you guys think because all the messy things that Samantha was doing were referencing the exact thing in the song. So she was camping up the song and it was funny. And I know you didn't like the lip sync. We don't care. Okay, we love Samantha. I'm very sorry to see Marisa leave. But you know, you can see all those things in any other review. I'm here to explain the references. So, bye. Onyx one, very well deserved. I fell completely in love with Marina, as you can tell. I absolutely love and adore Estrella Estravaganza. I'm going to be quite protective with Cota Carajota because of her age and because she is Gitana. Congratulations to the people who are making the show. They, we can really tell that you guys have been listening. Congratulations to the girls that are starting a whole new life. I don't know if it's going to be for the good or not, but you know, now people in the US know who Monica del Raval is, know who La Ucaña is. So I cannot be more thankful to them because, you know, I'm very proud of those artists as well. So I'm very, very happy and excited that you guys get to know them a little bit more. So yeah, that's all for today. I'm going to leave a lot of videos and references down below, a lot of them. Um, thank you very, very much for watching. Thank you very much to the people that have been supporting my channel and supporting me and sending me PayPal's. I want to say a big thank you to, to Abdullah, who always has my back. Thank you to Varda Petarda and thank you to Bea and thank you to Marion and thank you to so, so, so many people. Um, I could I wouldn't be able to eat every month and to <laughs> buy food for my whole family if it wasn't for you guys. So if you want to support my channel, I'm going to leave you my PayPal account down below. So thank you very, very much. Of course, I'm going to leave you a couple of links for The Chop, the episode where I review Drag Race España with Latriz Royal and Manila Luzon. So if you want to listen to that, the link is down below. And thank you very, very, very much to all of you. I love you all. I am living a dream. Uh, I'm so excited for this. I'm so excited to get to explain all of this to all of you. So thank you very much for being there. Thank you very much for all your love. I love you. Stay queer. Bye-bye.